It's right about 11. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and get started. I'm, I'm John Lee with the St. Louis Real Estate Investors Association, and we're very privileged to have uh, Kathy Davis of Davis and Travellini LLC with our weekly update on the St. Louis area court systems. And uh, <laughs> thank, thank you for being here today, Kathy. It's good to see you. So. Well, we're all at a safe distance, right? Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like um, I'm starting to say the same things over and over again, but I guess I do have a couple of random new things. Federal court has gone back to virtual hearings only. I'm not sure how long that's going to be. They tend to come in and out more quickly than the state courts do, but I got that notice earlier this week. Um, and they don't, we don't always get as much information from them. I don't know if they had a COVID case on their staff or what happened, but I imagine it's probably something like that. Um, the St. Charles County went down to phase one, but for the landlord cases, they're still hearing those. They consider them essential and their sheriffs are still operating. So that's not really an issue. And um, I think, hey, Chris, just tell me Jefferson real quick. Same as far as I know. Landlord only. Landlord only in Jefferson too. So we're okay. And the sheriffs are going? Yeah. 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 St. Charles um, might be still like landlord only as far as I Yeah, know. I just I just told them that I thought that was the case for St. Charles. Um Christine and Chris are very busy this morning, so you only have me. But um and I didn't talk to both of them before can you tell <laughs> before I got on to find out if they had anything new. Um the county continues to have problems with the jail. They've been staying in phase one. Um, I'm sure that if you've looked at the paper, you can see that they have stories about coronavirus in the jail all the time. To me, this makes no sense because um, the people in the jail don't come into contact with the eviction sheriffs. I mean, I just don't get it, but um, that judge is not changing his mind on that. Our writ where we took him up is at the Supreme Court. Their next hand down date to announce opinions is November 3rd which is a day when they might already be busy, do you think, with yeah. other <laughs> things because it's election day. So I'm not sure when we're gonna hear on that. We've been talking about filing our federal lawsuit even before we hear about the writ. However, the other federal lawsuits that we're, we're aware of, and I wanna thank um, Dave Soto and Jerry Hopping who have both been sharing information with me as they get it on other federal lawsuits. The Brown case in Northern Georgia, the judge there um, denied their application for a preliminary injunction. Um, and the opinion, the opinion is 66 pages long. Um, he, he agreed that they had standing, which was a, a thing, that they had the right to sue for this, but he disagreed that the CDC um, didn't have the, the authority to do this. And he made a big deal in his opinion about uh, the CDC being a temporary stay. Um, which as we know, temporary stays so far have all been getting extended. Mm -hmm. So it's not like anything is really temporary. Um, so I think I'm gonna evaluate with Greg this weekend. We're gonna look at the various pleadings in the different federal cases. And um, I gave him the ruling in the Georgia case yesterday and I don't think he's, he's had a chance to read it before I left, but um, we're gonna try to figure out if we think it would be worth it here, we would not be suing on the CDC order. We would be suing on the county judge stay of executions. Mm -hmm. And we might hold off for a while because this is not gonna be popular now where the coronavirus numbers are going up. Um, strategically, this might not be the best time to start doing this. Um, and I also think that all the courts um, have a concern about election day litigation. And there's always things that go on, even when there's not, when it's not a controversial election, there's always people who the registration gets screwed up or, you know, there's a polling place that doesn't open properly or somebody that's handicapped gets denied curbside voting. So there's always a lot of going back and forth. I guess maybe, I don't know if it's going to be in the courthouse this year or not, but there's always a lot of going back and forth to protect these people. I'm one of the lawyers who volunteers to do this. And I'll be at the main, um, I'll be in St. Anne on Tuesday, probably mostly at the main county board election headquarters, but also monitoring some other polling places so that we can let everybody know if there's problems. Um, if anybody had a chance to vote in advance, I'd do it. Um, we are really keeping our fingers crossed that there won't be, you know, like crazy militia people or crazy demonstrators or, you know, of any stripe 
um, bothering poll access. But um, obviously, you don't want to survive survive the coronavirus to get bopped in the head while you're voting <laughs> by a crazy person. So, um, in any event, I digress a little bit, but. We're expecting there to be a fair amount of court activity next week involving the election. And so, um, you know, we're kind of prepared for that. Um, but yeah, I think that we're, we're, we're really gonna consider going to federal court, but this might not be the best week to do it, but we're, we're discussing that. Um, so St. Louis City, um, Judge Burleson's stay is up next Friday. Um, and he usually talks to me before he makes his next order for the next month. Um, we have had some progress. I think it's very spotty, but there has been some progress in landlords and tenants getting the aid money. And in the cases that we've been involved with, um, the money you know comes through to the landlord in some way. Um, I have uh, one of the participants on here actually a couple of people on here who have shared with me their anecdotes about what's been going on. It seems like to me, the problem is with the agencies, I, not with the landlords, certainly, and probably not as much with the tenants as with the agencies. I'm hearing stories of tenants that are frustrated too, because they make an application then no one calls them back. They don't know how to, um, Go to the next step people you know their files get lost you know that kind of thing i did have one um case that i considered to be a big success last week that um my client uh was very pleased about the i was dealing with sarah turner from legal services was representing the tenant and she's very tenacious i get along with her fine but she can rub people the wrong way because she's very tenacious, but her tenaciousness worked for us in this case because she was tenacious with Arch City Defenders, which was um, funding her defendant. And she got all the money to us um, about three hours before the trial setting on Thursday. Um, the client was thrilled. We were thrilled. It was, you know, almost $4,000. So it was a significant sum of money. And in this particular defendant's case, they um, have some Section 8 eligibility. And because they lost their job, I think going forward, they're going to be okay because they're going to get their, um, you know, their contribution reassessed since their income has gone down. So I feel like we solved one and we've got 10,000 to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, I'm, I remain grateful for those of you who have time to... Um, to send me your stories. I see someone who sent me their story and I'm very appreciative and I'm sharing those stories with judges. I expect to talk to Judge Burleson today or next week. Um, I'm, I think we're not talking to Judge Burton in the county until November 10th, but um, you know, uh, a couple of the tenant lawyers have been very snotty on these calls uh, about, oh, well, it's the landlords. The landlords aren't getting back. And I've said that's not true at all. Landlords wanna get their money. They're motivated to respond. Maybe the tenants aren't pursuing what they're supposed to pursue, but in in most of the cases so far, it seems to be the agencies that are falling down, either falling down, losing the files, not following through, or in the case of one case I dealt with, um, just not being knowledgeable about what they needed. My client was a single member LLC with a pass through and they wanted an employee identification number. And we kept telling them that's the social and, uh, yeah, I'm, the client had to get me involved to persuade these people that that, that was legitimate. Um, I think that on the case I was just talking about where Art City Defenders was channeling the money out, I think the thing about Art City Defenders is um, I know those people and I, they're all lawyers. And I think that some of the agencies apparently are afraid they're going to get audited at the end of the year. And if they gave out the money the wrong way or something, they might get in trouble. The Art City people, they don't care. You know, they're they're going to be kind of like me on the opposite side of fence. Yeah, you think I did it wrong? Come get me. You prove it. You know, I feel like if we have a lawsuit and a judgment that says the amounts owed and names the parties and everything, that ought to be enough for anybody. That's a lawful judgment in a court of law. Um, and I wanted to tell you about something else that we've. I think we've begun doing this a little bit, but we're certainly throwing this out there for everybody. Um, for the people who have gotten the CDC order. Um, you know, those uh, 
those frequently asked questions came down from the CDC. And they also argued this in the Brown case in Georgia that we weren't, we, the only thing that we're stopped from doing is the actual put out of the person. You can file suit, you can go to court, you can have a trial, you can get a judgment, um, but you can't send the sheriff if they have a CDC affidavit. You can have a hearing on whether the allegations in the affidavit is truth or truthful or not. We've had a couple of those hearings and we haven't done well. The judges seem to just take everybody at face value if they say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for work, I'm paying what I can, I've applied for aid. They seem to just, you know, take their word for it. But the one, one thing that we can do is we can garnish. So if you have someone who's not paying you and we get a judgment and you can't put them out because of one of these stays, absolutely garnish them. Um, we run continuous garnishments now. The costs are not that great. If we have confirmed employment, I would say let's do it. Particularly if they're not doing a payment plan or anything to try to help you get paid. So I can't think of anything else. Has anybody got any questions or, oh wait, I forgot to look at the chat. Hang on. Garnishment is brilliant. Oh, thank you, David. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm evil. <laughs> I, you know, I, I feel very strongly that, you know, it's a pandemic, we're all in this together, you know, la, la, la. I feel like we should try to help people who are needy. But I also feel like there's a lot of people who are taking advantage. And the group that's not getting looked after is the landlords. Mm -hmm. You know, put the big stay on for the tenants. We know that a lot of tenants will just use that as an opportunity to just not pay and they won't make an effort or anything. And we know that, that money is never going to be collectible. A lot of it. I go through files every day because I look at the old files before we shred them to make sure there's nothing that we need to do. And I see judgments every day that we never collected. You know, the person filed bankruptcy or they're on assistance or they don't work or they work under the table or they've vanished or, you know, whatever. So I don't believe the tenant advocates who say, oh, well, you can collect the money later. Mm -hmm. Some of it, yeah, we'll collect. Christine is very strict about collecting. But there's a lot of it we'll never see again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a functional difference between, wait, it disappeared while I was reading it. Hang on. Mm -hmm. um, is there a functional difference between suing for rent and possession versus adverse possession? Yes. Adverse possession is a completely different thing. Adverse possession is almost more like a title action. And um, adver an, ad an adverse possession is like where the fence was put in the wrong place. So you've been mowing the other, a strip of the other guy's yard for 20 years and you want to reclaim that as your own, that kind of thing. Adverse possession really doesn't have anything to do with eviction. Rent and possession is where we're evicting them because they didn't pay the rent. And that's another point about that CDC order. It only applies to rent cases. If they are violating the lease in other ways, um, you know, a 441 situation or unlawful detainer situation, you can still evict them. Um, let's see, my tenant's lawyer called the Urban League yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrice, I appreciate that. And Patrice, if it's okay for me to say this, Patrice is one of the people that's been keeping me updated on her problems with the tenant. And, you know, I think in her case and in some other cases, it's the agency that's screwing up, not the tenant and not the landlord. Mm -hmm. What else you got, guys? Anybody have anything else? Oh, my husband just came in. Hi, honey. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, Kathy. This is Paul Smith. I, hi, Paul. I, I, I just wanted to ask you because uh, I can't type this fast. Okay. But basically, I, fortunately, the majority of my tenants are all paying. Um, but as leases have come up, uh, the 12 month lease, I've been letting them just go month to month with the thought that if it becomes an issue that they're not paying, then I can simply stop the renewal of month to month, just to give them a 30 day notice, not accept the next month's rent. And then after that 30 day, when the month month has ended, um, I can somehow get them out. Uh, and my question was, is, is that, which is, which I think you said was um, um, unlawful detainer, is that get processed easier than a rent and possession suit? Well, I think the key thing right now, hang on, a, I just have to cancel it. Are you going out there now? No. I'm not. Oh, okay. Um, 
my we've we're giving my mom a laptop so that she can do zoom with her book club um and my husband is here <laughs> to get it and set it up for her um that's a that's a pretty good idea um you know go that works both ways they can also leave you on a month's notice give us a call if you get to the point where you're going to give the notice so that we can either do the notice for you or walk you through what you have to do for it to be an effective notice this also means that you can raise rent on a month's notice if there's no lease and given what we're hearing about the fact that st louis area rents are increasing that might be something that you want to do um, because housing is certainly becoming scarce because we can't evict and right now the eviction stays the cdc stay and the stay in the city do not apply to unlawful detainers so you'd be able to get them out in the county as things stand today you would still not be able to evict them we're hoping for that to change we have no way to say for sure when it will um patrice says are evictions happening in the city um you can evict in the city on everything except rent and possession and judge burleson is his order is up next friday and he's going to be reviewing it and i expect to be talking to him soon about the city so i don't know for sure on the city yet are there any others over here anybody else that has a question or kind of quiet this week i think kathy um <laughs> well it's kind of the same old same old yeah and um, I hope you all are going to have a great Halloween. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are. <laughs> <laughs> the spooks will be out. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's it's going to be beautiful weather, I think, and a uh, big full moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. My grandson, some people follow my grandson on Facebook, I know, Max, and he is going to be Thor. Max is a skinny little seven-year-old, so he's going to be the biggest superhero there is. Aww. <laughs> so um and um i know a couple people have said that most of their tenants are paying good good i'm really glad for that yeah if i could get the tenants to do anything even if they don't have the money to pay the rent it would be to pay something and to communicate with you mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. to keep you posted that they just all seem to want to dig into a hole yeah, yeah. that's great advice right there yeah communication is key mm -hmm. And we have some other tools. I've talked before about notice of abandonment. The month to month idea is good. We're going to start garnishing, I think, on people that we can garnish. And, um, you know, I'm still going to be talking to the judges. So send me your stories and we'll keep you posted. Mm -hmm. we, we got that ruling in that case in Georgia, but it's 66 pages long. I can send it to you, John, to post if you want, but it's not. Uh, it's not. <laughs> Well, it's not the most readable thing <laughs> okay well, i'd be happy to do that but the, okay. either way whatever you whatever you would like would be fine kathy okay i just didn't want to dump 66 pages on you without making sure that uh that, that it was okay that's okay we'll put we can put it on the website and uh for those that want to read the full 66 pages um i will be honest i would briefly scan it myself i wouldn't read probably yeah. the word <laughs> it's it's a lot it's yeah. a lot yeah so i guess we'll see you all uh next week we sure will. Thank you so okay. much for the update. It's been great. Um, Thanks. I think David has one question. Here. Oh, David. Yeah, I see this. I'm sorry. 15 to 30. You know, at this point, someone who's paying, you know, 15 to 30 days late, as long as they keep paying. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I guess I should say the other thing. This is the thing we always say at this time of year, that we get towards, um, you know, the last couple of months of the year and we have fewer court dates. Um, you know, in normal times, the city and the county would pretty much not have court dates the last two weeks of the year, not do evictions then, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, filing suit has some benefits, even if we can't send the sheriff yet, you know, when we, the whole lawsuit process, um, we have been successful in getting some people on payment plans or getting them to apply for the assistance and that kind of thing. And the city and the county have a bunch of money and they're supposed to give it out before the end of the year. So maybe it'll start flowing out. So filing suit can be good now for those two reasons. So you can get a court date this year. And because as part of doing that process, you may spur the tenant into applying for assistance and you may get some money that way. So hard to say for sure in any given case, which would be the best strategy, but it might be something to think about. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the chat. 
So, Aaron, you got your hand raised. Do you want to say something? Oh, there's a hand yourself. raised. Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself, Harry. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, since you mentioned the month to month in light of everything that's happening now, do we need to have any special verbiage on our month to month agreement or do you have something made up that we can use? So if something does go south, it makes it easier for you to facilitate the removal of the, the people because everything's so, constantly changing now. So really by law, different. really by law, a month to month tenancy um, is terminable by either side on giving a month's notice. Um, the notice has to be, you know, hand delivered or posted on, the, on their door if it's coming from our side, but um, I don't think you have to have any particular verbiage in the lease. And another thing that's sort of an advantage there is that if they hold over after the end of the lease or after the termination of a month to month tenancy, they now owe double. We don't always collect double, but sometimes that's a bargaining chip to get single or to get them to move. Okay. okay. That's great. Okay, guys, mm -hmm. stay safe. Thank if you. If you haven't Jeff. voted yet, vote safely. Yes, thank you so much. And we, yeah. uh, we, we, we definitely uh, send, send our best to you, especially this week. It's going to be an interesting week. And you've done, <laughs> you, 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 you're just, you're out there in the forefront. We really appreciate all your efforts and everything you do for us. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you too. It's nice to talk to you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week. Okay. All right. I know. For anybody who wants to stick around, we are going to, we'll have a brief, um, I guess a brief version today of our haves and 